Moving to Immersat, which is the UK's biggest satellite company. Its biggest clients include the UK and US governments, as well as companies involved in maritime freight, aviation, oil, and gas. The company plans to launch a constellation of low Earth orbit spacecraft and set up 5G wireless networks, joining a new space race against the likes of Elon Musk. Rajiv Suri, Inmarsat CEO, joins us now. Rajiv, thanks so much for joining us. And obviously, there's a lot of hype around the space race and all of that right now. But can you put in really simple terms what this strategy means? Does it mean that on my iPhone now, I'm going to be able to ping Inmarsat satellites to get 5G? So what it means uh, is that, you know, we're, this is a, uh, it's called Inmarsat Orchestra. So we're redefining high performance connectivity for global mobility customers, right? So we are not focused on consumer broadband. This is all about maritime, aviation, enterprise, and government. And so this will allow us to get uh, the highest speeds, both worldwide, as well as in hotspots. And, and congestion in hotspots is, is a big deal, especially in maritime. So fastest average speeds, unique resilience for mission critical applications, and then the lowest average latency of any network planned uh, or existing. And this uses a multi-dimensional architecture, so it's going to have our dynamic mesh network that incorporates our geosatellites, and we've got seven more geosatellites launching. It'll put together then a LEO network on top of that with about 150, 175 satellites, and then there'll be 5G ultra capacity uh, for hotspots uh, such as in straits, canals, etc. So why um, wait until now to do this low? Earth orbit constellations have been a hot topic in the satellite business for a while, and it could take you until 2026 to get this online. With our focus on global mobility, so this is about you know B2B businesses like maritime, aviation, government and enterprises, geo is a very, very good solution because you get this you know massive ubiquitous global coverage. What we are trying to do, our need is not to go and launch and you know thousands of, of green field and field satellites in Leo, our need is to augment that capacity and to do that in places where it's really needed. So high demand places like canals and oceanic regions, and then add uh, ultra high capacity with terrestrial 5G, uh, really only to target these uh, congestion hotspots. So, you know, GX, which is our global express network for geo, is, is fantastic and good enough for this. In the next few years, we see the need for hotspot congestion relief, but we also see the need for uh, higher uh, latencies and speeds in, in certain areas, and hence the LEO component comes in. So how does this position you to compete with a company like SpaceX? Uh, SpaceX focuses on consumer broadband. Our focus is on global mobility, right? So this is this government and enterprise and maritime aviation market. It it, this is fantastic positioning for exactly this market because we have an L-band network that is great for industrial IoT and mission critical and resilient, all weather resilient applications. On top of that, we have this GX, Global Express Geo network, which is great for ubiquitous global coverage for exactly our sectors. So I think for our sector, this puts us in the best place possible of any company. Rajiv, if I can take you back to 2019, Inmarsat gets bought out, gets a take private for over $3 billion. Uh, Warburg, Pincus, Apex put you at the helm. What has it meant for Inmarsat to move from the public equity space into private ownership? How has that shifted the, the company's approach? You know, my priorities are technology leadership, have a customer-centric um, uh, company, and then take advantage of our fantastic distribution. Because remember, a, a lot of our business is wholesale, indirect, and, and some of it is direct. And, and, and that distribution is not easy to put together for this global mobility customer base that we have. So it's allowed us to focus on you know, long-term investments, such as we're doing now with Inmarsat Orchestra. We'll also have something coming in our L-band reinvigoration, which is important for industrial IoT. Uh, and asset tracking around the world. Um, and, you know, we've had a, a very good Q1 and a fantastic second quarter with very strong growth across the entire estate, uh, all of our business units. And uh, we expect to grow faster than the market, you know, for 2021 uh, as well. Maritime, aviation is seeing a rebound both in in-flight connectivity as well as the business jet business. Uh, we're seeing a rebound in, in maritime. We're seeing growth in government, very strong growth in the U.S. government as well as, you know, global government business, and then enterprise, which is our smallest business, is sort of being set up for growth to focus on new verticals like agriculture, rail, utilities. So I think this, this consortium ownership has really allowed us to focus on, on, on the long term and invest in technology. 